Hi, it's going to be very hard to follow that last one. A little bit less interactive, but feel free to, you know, throw in anything that you know about planets. <laughs> so uh, this is about how I learned to ask for help. And I was a first generation college student, as I'm sure a lot of you are. I'm one of eight kids. Even more came after this. And somehow I'm the most educated person anywhere in my family, any gen for every generation. But we're Mormons, so we track this. We know that. So I know that about ourselves. So I started college at 17, but I didn't exactly finish. I felt really lost and confused. I didn't speak that language of college that everyone else seemed to know. And in less than two years, I dropped out. And in that time, I never once talked to another student, uh, a faculty, a staff person, anyone about my fears, about my stress, anything. I just left. I didn't even withdraw from my classes because I didn't know that's what you had to do. I just left. So at the time, I was OK with that. I got a job. I traveled the world. I had the time of my life during my 20s. But eventually, I figured out, OK, I'm going to have to be an adult. I'm going to have to go back to school. So I did. I went back to school at the age of 28. And I went to Washington State University. Go Cougs. And I ended up getting all of my degrees from there. And I did go to graduate school, but I didn't go because I knew what it was or anything about it. Somebody came to me and said, you should go to graduate school. And since I had no other ideas, I said, that's great. <laughs> Tell me how to do that. And that's what I did. So somebody guided me. Somebody told me what to do. So somewhere in those three degrees, I read this book from Annette Leroux, and it was called Unequal Childhoods. She wrote about middle class families, how they raise their kids with something she called concerted cultivation. Those families teach their kids, you're entitled to talk to authority. You are a future authoritarian. It's OK for you to ask questions. It's OK for you to speak with people if you need something. In those families, it's play date. It's, it's structured time. But I also read about families that were a bit more like mine. And she called that the natural growth model. In my family, you're afraid of authority. You're told to keep your mouth shut and wait. And if you need to know something, the teacher will tell you. And our playtime was unstructured. We were free to roam around the neighborhoods and make up our own adventures, which was really great. But we never had guidance. We didn't have a lot of guidance. That's not the natural growth model. Right? So some kids are raised knowing how and when to ask for help, and some are not. And when I read that, I understood that was me. I was a really hard worker. I was good at doing what I was supposed to do. But I had no idea how to ask for help. And that's why I dropped out of college initially. So I really came to the realization that the, the unintended consequence of my parents raising me this way is I really didn't know how to ask for help, but also that I was waiting around for someone to be my guru. I was waiting around for someone to tell me, this is what you do, and this is how you do it. And so I did you know, stumble my way through graduate school, but I almost didn't make it. And I thought about quitting all the time. But then I started talking to my colleagues. I started talking to other graduate students. And specifically, I started looking for other graduate students who were from a working class background like mine. It took us some time to find each other. It was a few years, but we did. And eventually, through a few boxes of boxed wine, we figured out <laughs> we were all waiting for the guru. We were all waiting for the same thing, for someone to come and tell us what we were supposed to do. And rather than think through what is it that we actually need, we were still waiting for someone to tell us where some of our peers had no problems making those connections, asking those questions, getting all the help they need. So over the years, we started sharing notes. And we found we were talking a lot about the same needs, that a lot of us needed the same things. We just didn't know how to articulate it. One thing we needed pretty consistently is we needed to learn how to write. So we started a writing group, and we gave each other feedback. Thank you. We also needed to bounce around ideas about our teaching. So we started something that we called the teaching tea, where we drank tea and talked about our teaching ideas. And after some practice, I learned to do it on my own. So when it was time for me to learn about academic publications, I found a senior graduate student. And I was scared. But I said, hey, can we publish something together? And that's how I learned. And when it was time to, to navigate the job market, I asked a recent graduate, can I see your materials? And can I learn from you? And in, turn, in time, I learned how to ask. So I separated out the concrete things I needed, and I figured out that I really was entitled to ask for help. 
And through practice, I was better able to learn how to do that. I believe that a lot of our students, a lot of the students who are in here, are natural growth students. Your first generation, you don't know how to ask for help. So I try to build activities in my classes using that logic of showing students that they are entitled to ask for help. And hopefully that will help just a couple more students graduate. Thank you so much.